appears to help you, God? Yes, ma'am. You may be seated. Please state and spell your first and last name for the record. Levi Hancock. First name is spelled L-E-V-I. Last name is H-A-N-C-O-C-K. I received your honor. Thank you. Sir, what do you do for a living? I'm employed with the Las Vegas Metropolitan Police Department. And what division are you currently in with Metro? In the SWAT section. Okay. Um, I want to turn your attention to September 7th, uh, 2022. Uh, were you and your SWAT team members um, kind of sent out to help assist in potentially effectuating an arrest on a defendant by the name, or a suspect by the name of Robert Tellis? Yes, okay. we were. Um, do you see Robert Tellis here in the courtroom today? Yes, I do. Okay. Could you please point out where he is and describe an article of clothing that he's wearing? He's wearing a gray suit uh, on the far right side of that table. All right, let the record reflect the witnesses identify the defendant. Okay. Um, now, prior to going out to effectuate that arrest, were you aware that there was a search warrant being um, executed on that home earlier in the day? Yes. Okay. Um, so, once you guys are sent out, what is the plan at that point? What's the, the plan to, to do this? So we've been notified of the previous search warrant. We were also told that there was an incoming search warrant to take Mr. Tellis into custody. That was pending some DNA results. Okay. It was our understanding that surveillance was being done on the, uh, the, the house at that point in time, uh, at which point they made contact with him, uh, and then they deemed it a barricaded person, uh, okay. and that's when they we uh, were requested. And around that time, DNA results come back in. Are you made aware of that? Yes. And there's a decision to, that, that an effectuating arrest is going to happen? Correct. How, how many SWAT officers respond to this uh, barricade? I would say probably around 20 or so, at least. All right. Um, where were you? As, let me ask you this. When, let's say you're dealing with a residence, um, are sides of the home given a number? Yes, they are. What, what, what is that? How does that work in your So if you're facing level? a residence, the, to the left of it would be the two side. The rear was what we call the three side. And then to the right of it would be the four side. And the front would be? The one side. All right. So um, were you assigned a particular side of the house? Yes. It was a uh, red team was actually the primary team that day. And I work on blue team. Uh, they put a request out for additional uh, personnel. And I was assigned to work on the three side of the building. That's the back part. That's the back, correct. And uh, I don't want to assume, but it sounds as if maybe there are officers maybe on all sides of the house. Would that be fair? Yes, it's completely surrounded. Okay. Um, so are there efforts, as far as you know, to communicate with Mr. Tellis to see if he would come out on his own? Yes. Prior to our arrival, it was our understanding, at least the communication that had been put out, was that they were on the phone with him and he had made the refusal to come out of the, the residence. Do you know roughly how long um, people talked with Mr. Tellis? It was well more than an hour, okay. if not closer to two. All right. Ultimately, are you able, uh, does the SWAT team enter the home? Yes. Prior to our arrival, uh, the units that were conducting surveillance made the determination that they needed to enter the residence under exigent circumstances because they were in fear that he was harming himself. They made uh, entry into the home, cleared the uh, first level of the home. That's the point when SWAT assets started to arrive and took over uh, okay. inside the home. And, and based on what you learned, where did you believe Mr. Tellis was located in the house? You said you secured the first floor. Where did you believe he was located? So it was relayed to us. We also put out snipers. Uh, the, so they provide intelligence and overwatch for us. They had seen some movement on the... Uh, Second floor of the one side, if you're facing the home, the very first window, it appeared to be some block uh, windows, but they could see some movement, some hand movement, gestures coming from that, uh, from that bathroom. Okay. Uh, is, is there a decision made to make your way up the stairs to the second floor? Yes. Uh, prior to that, we used uh, robotics and a drone. Uh, what, to why, are those, why are those helpful? Well, we don't want to rush into any type of situation and put ourselves in a position where, you know, unfortunately we encounter a lot of individuals that uh, try and go suicide by cop. So we want to identify somebody, try and isolate them, uh, establish communication with them, and, and have a, a peaceful resolution. Okay. 
So do the robots and the drones establish visual on, on the defendant? Yes, the, the robot came in first, ascended the stairs, and actually proceeded into the master bedroom, which is on the one side of the second floor. Okay, so the front side of the house. The front side of the house, yes. I'm, I'm learning. Okay, um, so the robot gets visual. How about the drone? Does it establish visual, visual as well? Yeah, the, the, the robot actually made its way into the uh, master bedroom. There was a, quite a bit of clutter in the bedroom, so it couldn't really proceed much further. Soon after that, the drone came in, flew into that bedroom, and identified uh, Mr. Tellis in the bathtub. Okay, so he's in the bathtub according yes. to the visuals that you got. Yes. Okay, so what happens next? Uh, it was relayed to us as the drone flew in. And again, the robots have the ability to establish communications with the person. Uh, they relayed to us over the radio that Mr. Tellis had appeared to drop a knife outside of the bathtub, um, meaning that he was potentially unarmed at that point. Uh, they identified that he was covered in blood and potentially had some self-inflicted uh, wounds on him. Do you and your team make your way up the stairs to the bathroom? Yes, that's correct. Okay. When you reach the bathroom, uh, what, do you, what do you see and what do you do at that point? Uh, I was the first person in the bathroom operating the shield. Uh, we established verbal communication with him, told him, let me see your hands. Uh, he made some gesture like he had, uh, said, you know, if, I, if he did have a weapon, I believe I said, drop the knife or drop whatever you may have. Uh, he made some gesture that it was outside of the bathtub. I could uh, definitively clear his hands at that point, which we proceeded forward to uh, remove him from the bathtub. Okay. Um, are you successful in removing him from the bathtub? Yes. Uh, once removed from the bathtub, uh, do you provide any sort of immediate assistance medically uh, to Mr. Tellis? Yes. We extracted him from the bathtub and pulled him out into the main floor space of the master bedroom uh, so we could at least start to render some medical aid. Uh, we're fortunate enough to have a, what's called a tactical emergency uh, medical uh, team with us. So we have commissioned officers that are uh, EMTs, and then we have physicians that volunteer their time. So we had a physician on, on site along with uh, two EMTs that came in uh, along with myself to provide medical aid to Mr. Tellis. So essentially the three of you provide medical aid, is that correct? Yes, four so of what us. Four of you. Yes. What about the rest of those SWAT members? Do they stay stick around, or are they kind of sent downstairs? What happened? No, they were sent to just to make sure the rest of the residence was clear, and then just get out of the way. Okay. After providing medical assistance on the second floor, where do you take Mr. Tellis? Uh, we wrapped him in a sheet so we could ascend him down the stairs, uh, and then he was placed on a gurney, uh, at which point he was uh, taken out to medical. At the time that you uh, performed all of these actions, um, were you wearing anything to record things that you had seen or experienced uh, while inside the house? Yes, we're assigned a body ward camera, uh, which is worn on my helmet. Uh, prior to coming here today, have you had a chance to review that body worn footage? Yes. At this time, we are going to play uh, Officer Hancock's uh, body worn camera. It is found within Exhibit States 344. It's been admitted already. Thank you. Hold on. I'm just going to stop it right here. Do you recognize what we're looking at here? Yes, that's the stairs uh, lead up to the second floor of okay. Mr. Telsis' home. Okay, thank you very much. Copy that. We're making our way up to 88 into the master bedroom. The plan's already been put out by us.
bathtub. You want to get him outside? going to stop at 312. I think I'm reading that right, 312. Essentially, the rest of the footage kind of shows you guys administering that emergency aid at the top of the stairs. Would that be correct? Correct. Okay. Um, at this time, I have no further questions for the witness. Just briefly, based on your recollection and the images captured here, it appears that Mr. Tellis had lost a substantial amount of blood. Correct. Uh, did you have any indication at this time whether he had ingested drugs or alcohol? I didn't. Uh, the attending physician, John Anson, they made the determination that he possibly ingested something. I believe they gave him two doses of Narcan. Thank you. I have no further questions.